Yes, Lisa's rum cake. Toasted mallow. Hi. That is Piazzo23. Thanks for tuning in. Tuning in to our live. I got one person looking. You got two people looking. Yay, yay. Hopefully I'll save it this time to put up on YouTube. Awesome. Well, we... So we're late yeah. with our little pod... They can't really call them podcasts. What is this called? Live, Insta Lives. We're a little late. Live episodes. We've been... Busy. Trying. Yes, yeah, it's we've, been... every two weeks we were going to try to do it, but it's just not working as busy as you are with your creations and what we're doing with our creations and the holidays. It's just been crazy. So we will fit these in when we have time. Try. Absolutely. All right. Let's see here. Oh, hi. Yeah, Southwick Linens. They're in our business park. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so if you ever need linens for an event. They have or you know someone, they have beautiful linens. Yes. Very cool. Especially for Tom says hi. Hello. Hi, Tom. So we have Maddie from Lisa's Rum Cake. I was just talking about you today. Oh, you were? Yeah, with um, Sip, Eat, and Eat, Sip. Yes. You they know what I'm talking about? Sip So Good or Sip, Eat? Sip So Good, I think it is. Okay, yes. They're going to hate that we don't remember them. Well, but, there's two. I know there's uh, two of them. There's like Sip, Eat. Repeat and they're sip so good. I think it's sip so good. Okay. They're the ones with the rocks. Yes. Okay. Sip so good. So they came in today and uh, they had our pumpkin drinks and they'll be on their feed tomorrow. Oh, sweet. I love your marshmallows and your coffee. So pretty. Are you open right now? Yes, we are open right now. Come down. Turn on the camera. We can't see you straight. Oh, we're crooked. Are we crooked? Are we turned? Oh, sip so good. Hi. How's that? Glad you're tuned in. Is that better? I want to see some of those rocks. Do you have any of the rocks? I do. I have one of the rocks. I want to see the yeah. rocks that I'll show you the rocks. Y'all made. Hi from Cashiers, North Carolina. Is that better? Is that better? Let me know if that's better. Because you know. Your phone's having a little technical difficulties. Are you straight on here? Are you crooked? Still sideways. Okay. Let's just Let's do this. There Better? Go. All right, you can kind of see both of us. I don't know, yeah. Well, you can see, definitely see they're both there. But, so, just awesome. Woo. Okay. Still sideways. <laughs> Still sideways. Um, I Thank miss... you for letting us know, by the way. Yeah, I didn't know. Who knew? I'm in the state. What is the street? Uh, Gilbert. Gilbert Road is where we're located. And Gilbert is on a If you go south on the 60, right before Guadalupe, we're right there on the right hand side. They're closed already, so you can't go to them. But they are open Monday through Friday. Friday nine to five. Nine to five. And then on Saturdays from nine to one? Nine, nine to, 11. to eleven. Nine to eleven. So definitely want to grab their sweet cakes. Cake cuts. Very yes. delicious stuff. So yeah, we were saying hey, TVs. So uh, well I guess we could talk about the new stuff first and then go into what we want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. I was reading a thing on Marcus Lemonis today on Twitter and it says that you want to introduce new product via social media. Oh, we love Marcus Lemonis. We do. Anybody watch The Prophet? Look, your sister says hi. Hi, Meg. Megs. Hi, Lindsay. If you guys don't know Blaine Baker, you need to go follow her on her Instagram page. She does amazing little cutouts. <gasps> oh, let me go grab one. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Look at Maddie for a while. Treat toppers for cupcakes, cannolis. I put them on top of our sling cannolis. Any kind of treats, cakes, etc. So we are going to talk about social media. Um, first, we want to show you guys some new products that we're working on, uh, especially for holidays, fall, autumn. First day of fall, I think, is tomorrow, actually. The 22nd, right? What's today? Yeah. We, we Our schedules are not... We're in Arizona, so it doesn't really consider the first day of fall. Okay, so Bling Baker. Bling Baker made this little guy. I don't think you see how sparkly he is. Show them mine too. This Hello. little toasted mallow guy. So go follow Blaine Baker. If you go follow her on her Instagram page, and then she has an Etsy page. Yes. You she can purchase it. directly on Etsy. We also have some available at Lisa's Rum Cake, a variety of toppers. And um, anyhow, so another young entrepreneur, woman entrepreneur, a woman, a womanpreneur, 
uh, go follow her. You'll really love what she's done. She does happy birthdays, anniversaries. Can she pretty much do anything? Anything. Can pretty much do any kind of toppers for like cakes, cupcakes. Logos, whatever. Fun stuff. So yeah, this is pretty awesome. Yay. Yay. So cute. Um, what's everyone saying? Uh, okay, I think I'll be there. Hello from New York oh, thank City. thank you. Tomorrow is the first day of fall. Yay. Uh, hello from New York City. How did you grow your brand Instagram page? Love cannoli. That's you. Someone asked how you grew your Instagram page? Yeah. I bet I could answer that one pretty good. Showing big. some love on your live video now. Yay. Nice. Is this a magnet? No, this is not a magnet. This is a topper. See? It's glitter paper cut out. Beep, beep, beep. But go to uh, Blaine Baker, Blaine Baker on Instagram, and you'll see all her fun stuff, and you'll know what it is. Um, what was your answer to my following page? How you agree your Instagram? Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's actually a good segue into our social media It is topic. a great segue. Real segment. photos, people. Real photos, real product, up to date, constantly posting and updating what you're working on. Yeah. And you don't just take one photo from two years ago when you open and <laughs> no. keep posting it. We're gonna I've get more. Into, we're gonna get more into social media, but this woman is crazy. This woman about you, you update Instagram so well. I do, I do. So I do my my literally every night for homework. Like I'll leave here and I'll go home, and I will do homework on how to get my name out there more. Because um, I'll see other companies who are like, hey, look at there in. Delish, or they're in this magazine, or they've been featured here, and I get so annoyed. Not because they're being featured. I wish them all the best luck. I wish them well in their small mm -hmm. business, but because I wasn't there first. I'm so I always am trying to figure out how I can get ahead of everything before someone else takes my right. thunder. So um, how I got so many followers is just by doing that. So you've been um, very diligent. It's a, it's a never ending, if you really want to work hard on your social media or your Instagram especially, it's kind of a full time job. It is a full time job. It, it will take... I do it at night too. Because yeah. in, during the day when we're producing or we're busy with customers or the store's open, it's really hard um, to do that. So mm -hmm. you have to have it, do it in your free time even if it's late at night. So I'll, I'll be on Instagram or on Facebook and I'll see Maddie post like at 1 o'clock in the morning I or 12 at midnight. And it's because we're up looking at like new trends. Our brains don't shut off. What other companies? What other companies are doing? What's what's the newest dessert? How to make your desserts better? How to make your product better? Yep. And how to show ourselves? So um, you grow your followers by doing a lot of homework. It's not like one picture and done for mm -hmm. the day. It's literally you got to post at least three times a day. You got to post what I found video. Video works really well. Video seems to be the thing to post on Instagram um, to grab your followers, to grab that base because I'm the same way. Like I'll scroll, but if I see like a video, for some reason I'm obsessed with the barber cuts, barbershop cuts. Okay, that's not something I've looked at, but that would be <laughs> how clean and precise. Yeah, and how they how they with cut the razor, with the razor uh -huh. on the how they make the cut and doing the. For some reason I'm obsessed with that, so I watch them. So, you know, people have these little obsessions with little things here and there. And uh, all customers love videos. They do. So I've been watching those consistently. Now, will I ever go get a barbershop? No, I mean, I could. I probably could. But um, I you find need it a very. Fade? I, need just a, I need a fade. <laughs> I do, actually. I do. But um, it's just interesting. Uh, what are some videos that you watch? Um, okay, this sounds kind of funny. The slime videos oh. that's trending. When people are like pushing into the slime, I don't. It's fascinating to me. I don't know why, especially when there's glitter in it. Yeah. The glitter's moving, and I'm like, how is it not sticky or whatever? Yeah. So I uh, watch a lot of those. Blaine Baker says she's obsessed with watching Royal Ice cookies. I am too. Oh, that that is a good one. Yeah, the Royal Icing when they mm -hmm. do the whole piping of it. Also very mesmerizing. And again, video just seems to grab your attention. And some of it's tutorial. So even though it's like a minute long, it's something quick and fast and it keeps your attention. Sometimes with a picture, you're just scrolling. You're not even interested in the words. You're not even interested in what, you're, what the you're company right. said. But if you there's a video, you kind of want to watch. You kind of want to watch and then you want to read what was said about the video. Yep. So it's definitely homework as far as uh, how to gain those followers. On that. Like your... New pops here. You just posted a video about those. I did. See? Check out Trisha's newest creations. These are my new creations. These 
will be available for Halloween. Third one. Look at these cuties. So we made these for Halloween and it's two graham crackers with a marshmallow and then dipped in chocolate. So these will be interesting. People, hocus pocus. I mean, where else have you seen a dessert shop do a hocus pocus? I know, I'm pretty excited about the hocus pocus. I so. love that. You know why? Because I haven't seen it. It's hocus pocus? No, I've oh, seen the movie, but I haven't seen, seen anybody book? making yeah. Halloween treats out of the book. I'm not, I'm so. not gonna say like, oh, I thought it was all about myself. Um, actually, a couple people uh, tagged me on Facebook on, I guess another creator made these. And uh, I thought, well, I probably can do it, so I did it too. They look great. Thanks. But and then we have, you know, your delicious these, cannolis. I will say, these, we, we've done a lot of videos. Sicilian cannoli, you can see. It's an Italian pizzelli cookie shell. There's caramel apple. Oh my God. It's What's on stuffed. Here? It has graham cracker. Oh. It's stuffed with spiced apples, vanilla custard. I'm gonna have to try that one. Yeah. What's this one? They're both for you, limoncello. Oh. I'm and nice. then we make a pumpkin pie that's topped with the vanilla fluff. Yeah. No, oh. pumpkin spice fluff. Pumpkin Excuse spice. Excuse me. Pumpkin, pumpkin spice. spice fluff. Yeah, it will be good. So you can get these over at uh, Lisa's Rum Cake. Starting. Uh, they're available this weekend. Nice. So tomorrow, come tomorrow between nine and five, or Saturday nine to eleven. Yeah. So, okay, so what else we talk about social media? Well, you touched on videos. Videos, yeah. Um, okay, when it comes to photography, do you have a set strategy when you're posting a photo? Um, not, re not really. Like, I think like our drinks, when we're featuring something for the first time, mm -hmm. like say these guys. So if I'm featuring these for the first time, I want to take yeah. a nice clean picture with a nice background. Right. Um, so I definitely want it to be no clutter, a very abstract background, like a wall, focus, focus straight on, on product, um, and not just a straight photo, like straight on picture because those look boring. Yeah. But like an angle picture where you either get the corner or gives you a different dimension. Yeah, a different dimension product. of the product, and that seems to be more eye catching. So if I do photographs, it's definitely usually out on my wooden tables because it's a wood flat surface, and then I Which use is good, and the then it's brick, consistent. Then the brick background. That's so great. all the pictures I take, I try to keep it consistent in that same area on a consistent basis when I do my pictures. And you know what? That's really smart. I will say it's nice though because that's your strategy like if you have a new product. Mm -hmm. But if you're featuring a unicorn cone and you've already launched the product but you want to update people, hey, we still have them in the store, mm -hmm. you can post about it in a different setting or a different scene. Then I, I usually exult, I put the unicorns in a holder mm -hmm. and I'll just take a picture of the holder. That's smart. Or I'll take a picture of it laying on my production table when I'm making them and say, look, we got these back in stuff. So there's a professional first time product picture and then after that it's more... In the, in the factory. Yeah. Produ production. Being, pro being produ produced in the production and how it looks. So yeah, there's always a different look. You don't want to use the same picture on a consistent basis. I will say, I think that's probably my biggest pet peeve with social media. I've seen a lot of Instagram accounts, especially lately. Somewhat newer businesses, it's like they have one background they design and they take every single photo on it. So you just feel like it's all redundant, but everything feels too staged. Right. Right, because in our factory, we're moving around all day. We have to rearrange stuff to yeah. fit our needs, what we're working on, but I don't have time to sit and stage a photo for two hours. I just don't have time. But right. I feel like there's a lot of businesses that, that focus more on staging the product than actually trying to sell the product or inform people about the product, if that makes sense. Yeah. It gets just a little bit too redundant. Too redundant. And then you're not, you get bored. Because now all you're looking at when you're looking at the pictures, all you're looking back is, I love you too, Joey. <laughs> I think that's what it says, Joey. Um, I, I think don't. it uh, becomes redundant because now you're just looking at the background. You're not right. even looking at the eye. Like, oh, this company posted another picture of a new product, but oh, it's the white background. Yeah, it's the same Typical. background. Typical. It becomes, you know what to expect from the company. You kind of want to keep people on their toes yeah. and change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have, like you post with your brick background. Yes. We have a couple of boards where we like to post pictures of new products. You have a white, oh. We have like a white board and we find that that, you know, helps Show the product. Focus on the product more, but I like to have cakes on wheels. Yeah, I was gonna say, I like wheels. when you post videos or pictures of your cake on the wheel and behind it you see the ribbon and yeah. the colored Our ribbon rack of the candies. confetti. Yep, yep. I, I, I think it's so much better that way. Because we're showing... not trying to hide, like we produce, we use these, the stuff. these hands produce all of that <laughs> stuff. So we want to show people that what we do. What we do and 
here's the environment we do it in. What so. are you all chatting about? We are chatting about social media and Instagram. small business for small businesses. And you know what's yep. funny? Today I was talking to, I'm going to say it wrong again. They just posted on here. Sip. Sip so good. Sip so good. And we we're talking about how small businesses don't utilize social media or Instagram enough. Really? Like sm- like we do. Yeah. I know you do. Mm-hmm. But there are small businesses that I know of actually who still don't use Instagram enough to promote their business. Right. And, and it just baffled me because this is definitely free. Mm-hmm. And this is something you really want to utilize to make sure that people well, know who you are. let me ask you. Would you rather spend time on Instagram, Facebook, or the free social media platforms or just pay someone to drop an ad and put it in the newspaper. Oh, no, definitely this. 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 And I think there's one clear reason why we both probably really enjoy that. We're talking directly to you guys. We don't have social media people that we hire to talk to you or answer your questions. If you send us a message or comment on our photo, you're talking directly to people making your product. And I think that's a big deal, right? Yeah, and I think our ROI is more so on this mm-hmm. return on investment is definitely bigger on this on Instagram than agreed. it is on, on any print or radio or ad please. it's true um, I'll have people who will show up on here would you even consider using different flavors different flavors for my marshmallows or for these guys or for the cannolis which one which one um, what was I saying oh I'll get sales just from doing this Right. You know, we'll be talking and somebody's like, oh, are you on the website? Yeah, go, you know, find us at the Toast and Mallow. Oh, well, is your, how much are they? And then we get sales. Like, I'll get off of doing this and then I'll have like four or five sales that come through. So, and that's a good point. Sometimes we can't even judge how much sales we're actually getting or how many sales we're actually getting right. from Instagram, right? Right. But your customers will hear about us yep. from you posting yep. and vice versa. Yep. And it's great because every day we'll have somebody that comes in, oh, I heard about you from this business or this business, or I was just on Toasted Mallow at 11 o'clock the other night, just kind of flipping through and I saw something about your company and I clicked on it and then I saw you had pieces of cake and that's yeah. just people are browsing and they come across something and collaborating is fun. Right. We both make desserts. We don't make the same desserts. Yeah. Not at but all. we can collaborate to and make support special. each other. Exactly, because right. that's what it is. It's not about you know competition and whatever. We make two totally different products, but we both make handcrafted quality right. products. Like, I'm not gonna say a company name, but you sell your cakes at another company, and I don't think their Instagram page is strong enough. And they've and got a great concept. And yeah. It's a cute shop. You just have to constantly. Be engaged. Yeah, but it's I, and, constant, and it's always constant. And I think if they were, if they were more engaged with their product and with mm-hmm. their customers, it would even be bigger, bigger for you who you are and stuff yeah. like that. So I just, Agreed. I think people forget helping each other out. Yep. yep. I think they, I think social media, especially Instagram, small businesses should definitely jump on that train and utilize everything they can from it because it's free. Yep. And it's easy, and for everybody knows how to use it, and it's engaging. I 100% agree. So, especially yeah. if you're starting a new business, make a candy yams mallow for Thanksgiving. Ooh. Pumpkin. I think you put a pumpkin marshmallow on top of candy on yams. I think it'd be awesome. Well, I I had a yam casserole. I had marshmallows on top. Really? Just vanilla. Yeah. Come get marsh vanilla marshmallows. Vanilla? Melt them on Where top. Where get pumpkin spice? That would be really good. On top of a yam casserole. That would be delicious. Oh gosh. I don't eat yam, so I don't. Know. Link Baker, if we're making that, <laughs> we're gonna surprise mom. <laughs> anyway, I I think you're really. That's important. Yeah. When you start a business, people are gonna tell you, you should put an ad in our magazine. They're brand new or. We would love to trade you for ad space and this and that. You can do so much for free. Yeah. You should start a business with the mentality, let me try as much free as possible yeah. and it will take time and it is a process. You're not going to get, you know, 1,500 followers overnight. It's a slow process. It is. Kind of. The very, I'd say the first few thousand, slow. Slow. But, but then it picks up after that because then you have it's, other Yeah. It's outlets. pretty steady. Other outlets will start seeing you and start reposting your product. Mm-hmm. Like I know a lot of our followers came from foodies who have, you know, forty thousand or fifty thousand followers, and then they posted a picture of one of our and then it just desserts, spreads. and then it and spreads. It just spreads. And that's the thing. If you if you put quality photos, I think another important thing 
don't use a filter just because. No. Don't you use might filters. think, oh, this looks better. But if it doesn't portray your food in a realistic yeah. way, then yeah. it's not gonna be something that's appetizing to the eyes or right. you know, for someone to wanna repost it. Right. And I learned that the hard way. Like the beginning, if you were to look way in the beginning of like Did you use the filter? All filters. I, I kind of filled I, I did a few <laughs> and then my sister that helps with Instagram. Madison, you filtered it again. I was like, no, I didn't. She's like, yes, you did. <laughs> like, like, was like, it oh, the hefe? I think it's a hefe or uh, something like that. Yep. I use Claritin. Algae. Yeah. Claritin, whatever it's called. Uh, but just edit brightness, saturation. Do it that way. I appreciate that you guys are not only speaking to your viewers directly, but you speak with reality in mind. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Oh, Thank welcome. you. Come to California. Yes. For I was now, just there. Ship. Yeah, we, we do they ship. They ship. We ship. To California. Uh, it'd be nice to be in California. Customers will not buy again. Customers they will like not to buy, buy what they see. Yep. You're, you're exactly right. So if you post, you could make the most incredible dish or dessert and ruin it with a horrible filter and nobody's going to want it. No. At all. Yeah, at the beginning of my pictures, so they all had filters and then they had a little minion next to them. I learned the hard way. <laughs> A little mini. I was like, "Oh, this is cute." We're telling like, you what doesn't work. Because I'm all, we tried it. yeah. And then, and then my partner was like, "Stop doing that." I'm like, "But it's so cute." She's like, "It's cute to you, but, but it's not selling the product, else. right?" So you want to make sure to take pictures that sell the product. Like, I'm not gonna put these guys next to a witch in a cauldron and s smoke. I mean, it'd be cute, but you guys want the product, so I'm just gonna highlight these guys. Hello, come okay. to New York. New York, oh my goodness. New York is waiting for us. Come to New York, oh, two from For New now, York. you can ship, but. Blaine Baker says she taught you how to, do, to edit your I, pictures. I learned how to edit photos. <laughs> yes, I did, thank you. Uh, that was Absolutely. cute. <laughs> so is there any other thing that you've tried on Instagram that you found didn't work or you learned better? Or you learned that, oh, I shouldn't do that after all? Um. Like the minion next to all yeah. your products? Minion, no. No minion. <laughs> no minion. Trisha, Maddie, I guess we need to grab Hazel and go to New York. Okay. Yes. Let's, Let's do that. Go. Let's open a uh, toasted mallow, this is rum cake, little dessert corner. That'd be so fun. So we do different desserts. Heck and yeah. we'd have coffee because we'd have our coffee. Coast coffee, and cold brew. Cuts and marshmallows. That'd be fun. I'll take pro picks for you. I accept <laughs> payments and sugar. That's awesome. Um. You know, I just learned as far, it just ha it has to be very interacting. I've posted pictures that'll get like maybe 200 views. I'm like, oh, that picture is horrible. So what I do is if I do see a picture within the first hour, it's got maybe 200 views and it's not moving fast, I'll put another post immediately up. To, okay. To try gotcha. to grab those other viewers or grab someone's attention. You know attention. what's interesting about that? It might not be too that it wasn't a good picture. It might be the time of day that you posted it where there might not have been the audience too. So it's kind of... But you know, for, you know now, yeah. kind of what time, do you try to post around the same time every day? Every day. Every day I get up, I post around 8, 8.30 every morning, the so first post. So you have, a, you have a, a schedule that you yeah. know works. Yeah. 8, 8.30 and then I'll post again around 1 and then I'll post again maybe around 5 and 6. That way I have those three, like, so I have the morning people who are at work already and they don't want to start working, mm -hmm. so they're on their phones looking at stuff. Yep. And then I have the, the one o'clocker, so it's it's lunchtime, so mm -hmm. you're in your car or whatever, and you're eating lunch and you're looking at your Instagram page, right? Yep. And then I have the six o'clock where people are at home and they're eating dinner or whatever, and then they're looking at their phone again. Smart. So those three times usually are like the biggest hits because you're at home, not, you're doing You know, something. it's funny because I used to post between eight and nine in the morning, and I started finding Usually when I post before 7 a.m., for some reason I start getting all these new likes. Oh, nice. So not necessarily just my followers, and maybe not people that follow my page, but I'm getting more mm -hmm. likes from different people. I don't know if it's because the East Coast I was gonna say, probably East Coast. Probably time zone. Because by the time I post at 8, 8.30, it's 11.30 their time. And I don't like so to be up before 7. I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna be I just, honest. I don't get up before 7.30. I'm up at 7.30. We're yeah. working till midnight, yeah. 1 o'clock, 2 a.m. 7.30, 7.30. Love your cherry filling marshmallow video. I don't know how many times I saw it. <laughs> oh, the cherry bombs. The cherry bombs. I oh, put those so out good. again. Yeah. I like the other ones you made too. The caramel. The caramel. Caramel drops. Caramel, caramel drops. drops. Those will be all ready for which one? How do you feel about the use of hashtags? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have a, I have a couple of things I could say about this. Okay. 
I know it probably looks better when you don't have hashtags in your comment, your your initial post. Right. But I find I do not get response from people if I do separate separate my hashtags from my original content. Really? I don't get as many likes. And I don't know how that if that works for you. I like don't know. That. I've never tried. Um, and also, if you put the hashtags in your original post, mm -hmm. you can go edit it. Whereas if you write it as a comment, you can't edit the comment. Just so you have it. to delete it and then rewrite all those hashtags. Um, I know that sometimes I might use more hashtags than they say is appropriate or whatever. But I mean, when I'm searching for certain cakes, especially online, right. There's so many different terms you can use that, you know, like I posted one yesterday of a rustic, it looked like a log. Yeah, it was wedding cute. Cake. Okay. So cute. But I was looking, bark wedding cake, tree wedding cake, log wedding cake. I mean, there's so <laughs> many, but some of them were totally irrelevant to uh, the design that I was just kind of like, I don't even know what you would, if you're looking what? for this type of cake, what would you right. put on it? Right. So it was just tricky. Um, but I definitely think some people, I don't like when people post a picture about something and they use a hashtag that is totally irrelevant to what they posted. Like follow for follow? Like if you put, like if I put a cannoli and I'm like visit Sicily.com or, or, or hashtag, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Or hashtag G, uh, gym tan laundry, GTL, like the Italian guys <laughs> do, or Guido, like that's great, those are like Italian things, but I it has nothing to do with, do with my cannoli, cannoli, so I'm not gonna post it. Um, what kind of gelatin do I use? I use a kosher beef gelatin for my marshmallows. I do not use pork. Good to know. Yeah. I didn't know that. Really? I didn't know there's different types of gelatin. There is. Not my space. <laughs> there's I a, learn something new every time I'm in this in, in this the place. kitchen. Uh, there's pork gelatin, um, which is a cheaper brand and um, easily available, and then there's beef kosher gelatin um there is definitely like high kosher mm -hmm. uh, which has been blessed by a rabbi and everything all that yeah um but we just use uh i don't eat pork i haven't eaten pork since i was 13 so when i found that there was two of them i definitely went with the you beef went with the beef yeah because just because of personal preference and it also Good opened question. it opened it was a great question i also it also opened the doors to indian or muslim because they don't eat pork. Oh, because they, they have to have kosher. Yep. yep. So they can. Now, I have been told, well, are you certified? I'm not. I am not a certified kosher kitchen. There's just certain ingredients that you use that are kosher. Uh, the, yeah, because you, in order to be certified, you have to have a rabbi come in and they bless the kitchen and certify. But I don't have that money, and I'd rather put the money into the marshmallow, unfortunately. I know. Um, I've lost a couple of customers because they're like, oh, I just need a certificate. I'm like, eh, I don't have one. But yeah. it is beef, I promise you. We don't. Like we've had people go, well, can you do a bacon, maple, marshmallow? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, you know, someone asked us if we would do a bacon something cake, and I was like, I don't want I'm sure want like to a eat. bacon maple. I, I, that doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> I love bacon, and I love maple, but I don't want to eat cake like that. Bless everything. Yeah, right? Um, so, but I, I won't I won't do pork in the kitchen. I won't do bacon, anything, or anything else with pork. I just don't like it. It's just me. That's a good question. But there's companies so out there. How do you, you feel about the use of hashtags? Is there anything particular that you do or that you see that you're kind of like, what are you doing? <laughs> My friend and I are bringing our kiddos to both places on Saturday. Oh, oh yay. yay! High five. Yes. That's awesome. Thank you. We appreciate that. On YouTube, some accounts put perverted hashtags just to get as many views as they can. And yeah. And that's what she was talking about as far as putting yeah. in hashtags that just. If don't. you're. Okay, so if you're trying to get people that want to look at your product because of what it is, put relevant hashtags. If you're just someone that's fishing for as many likes and as many followers as you can get, that means you're not focused on what you're trying to sell. So irrelevant hashtags, they annoy me. If I'm looking at a picture of something, it, it just bothers me. Well, you know, on YouTube, I don't think you can see the hashtags that have been put on them. So I'm not going to lie, on YouTube I have these, like, during the whole election I did put hashtag Donald Trump just so people... Okay. <laughs> and then my marshmallow video would show up. So, That's I will say on YouTube, clickbait. So I, I mean, I YouTube, I'm not, I'm not on yeah. it as much, but... Try to get the social, I'm trying to get on the YouTube platform more. How many social media platforms are you using? How many do you use? I use... I think we both use Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter is the least popular amongst our yeah. customer base, so That's we don't strong. use it as much. Those um, 
I personally love Google Plus. And I don't know Google Plus. I use Google Plus um, because we get thousands of views on our posts on that. That's cool. And yeah, I mean, I, don't use I didn't start using Google Plus honestly until about two years ago, okay. more diligently. And now when I have a sale going on or a new product, Google Plus is on the list. I got to post it. How do you guys feel about the hype of places like Baked by Melissa or Carlos Bakery? Um, okay, I've never tried Baked by Melissa. I have um, tried Carlos Bakery. I think their stuff is delicious. I'm not going to lie. From what I had, I had a lobster tail, whatever. And I mean, Carlos Bakery, I there's nothing about their page that bothers me. I think Baked by Melissa, what bothers me is I didn't realize that their cupcakes were... Have you seen them? No. They're itty bitty. They're not a small cupcake. They're like a bite sized cupcake. Oh. I didn't know this because the way that they shoot some of their photos, I thought it was a regular cupcake oh, or okay. just a mini cupcake. Because they show it, they show it. But these are like, angle. I don't know if any of you have had Baked by Melissa. Um, I haven't tried them yet, so I can't vouch for it. But I didn't realize that their product was as small as it really is, just based off of their posts. I've never seen I'll have a look now. Mm hmm. Size of a pinky. Oats. Oh, Interesting. That that's crazy. I mean, I, maybe it's just me, but I they don't look that small to me in their photos. But then I've heard people comment how small they are. I'm I'll have to look at them now. Going I'm to New interested. York in November, I might have to bring back a little sampler. I'm gonna have to send you to some places in New York. Okay. There's some marshmallow places in New York. You have to go. Oh. Check out and let me know. R and and we love R and D, don't we? <laughs> Especially research and development. Oh yes. Desserts. Yeah. We'll when I, I don't know about you, but when I go on. Travel now. Oh yeah, if there's, I a, look if there's an account account that I've been following on Instagram or whatever, I have well, to go. We need to get your cannolis on Insider. That'd like someone amazing. else is on Insider cannoli. I'm like, no, this is rum cakes. Oh, needs to be on Insider. Uh, How long do you whip the marshmallow before it is perfect pikes? Um, depending on my, t I have two speeds of mixers. I have a 325 and a 575. So the 325 I mix for about 15 minutes. And the 575 I mix for about 10 minutes for a perfect peak for my marshmallows. Ah! I almost dropped you. I almost dropped you guys. That's what they said. I almost had a phone down. Uh, really nice place to promote your... I would love to be on Insider. That'd be fun. You I, I watch need to Insider. be on Insider. Oh, I don't know how to get you there. I, I, help me. You've been on Insider. I know. We've been on there three times now. Just from people who do it. And I don't know how they do it. And I... See? If, and you need I, to get, I don't know. Is it like a luck of the draw? They're looking Somebody... Okay? Does anybody, anybody here know anybody at Insider? I can't do it. The light wants to take it. Someone needs to tell them about Lisa's rum cake and their cannolis. You can buy Ooh, you have a 600 Pro. My God, jealous. That's a cannoli. That is a cannoli. This but cannoli. It's, so I think why I would love to be on Insider, it's not your typical cannoli. It's not a deep fried shell. No. It's an Italian pizzelli cookie. So it's the cookie that looks like a waffle. Kind of. Yeah. And we fill it with our Italian custard, just like we put in our cakes, and whipped ricotta cannoli cream, and that's it with powdered sugar topping toppings. We make cannolis with pumpkin fluff on top. Yeah. Pumpkin pie for fall. We make the fluff and they use it on the desserts. Thank you. Are you Italian? I am Italian. <laughs> half, I'm half Italian. I posso you? parlare in quella del italiano? Sure. Well, speak what? a little bit, but what are you? No, no. Oh. Irish Italian. Oh, Irish Italian. I, look at this. Look at this very fair skin. I'm, oh, you know what? Next to you, I got I the Irish color. skin. Yeah. I think I need to hang out with you more. I. Yeah. I think I got a tan this week when I went to San Diego. The custard was my idea. Yes, it was. It was a good. It was a very good one. <laughs> She's cute. Me, me, I get over here and look at me. So you should be here, Megan, right back here. Since I know. you're a woman entrepreneur, you can That's right. chime in. How much and where can I purchase your wonderful cannolis? These are available at our shop, Lisa's Rum Cake. We're on the south side of Elliott Road in an industrial park. We have a state-of-the-art cake factory, so we're not in a retail um, park or whatever you call it. But yeah. we're, we're between Elliott and McQueen Roads in Gilbert. Mm -hmm. So about three and a half miles from here. Yeah. From Toast and Mallow, so. Do you want some coffee? Oh God, that sounds good. Give me a moment. I were, you, put were you up late on Instagram? Because I was. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I have to put out our order in for our coffee drinks. She Do you make a mint, chocolate mint mellow? Oh yes, she does. Okay, so funny story about mint. Um, 
we have a lot of customers that hear about us from Toasted Mallow. We use their fluff on some of our products and vice versa. And people, when they come in and they say, oh, I heard about you from Fluff It or Toasted Mallow, I ask them, okay, what's your favorite s'more? Unanimous. Birthday cake s'more, but instead of the, uh, the vanilla fluff, everyone said get it with mint marshmallow. And oh my gosh, so good. So try the birthday cake s'more with mint. Um, how did you guys come to making desserts and eventually making a living out of it? It's a good question. I have a different background than Trisha. I was born into the dessert industry. My grandmother started a very famous cake shop in town back in 1975 called Kathy Drum Cake. So I've been in the bakery my whole life and I have no culinary degree or experience. I actually have a marketing degree, but just growing up being around desserts and food and baking, that's how I learned everything. Trisha started making marshmallows after um, leaving a corporate career, and so she didn't have any former background in it, but I mean, she's killing it now. Um, Los Angeles. Oh, LA would be amazing. Sweet. LA would be really fun. Um, I could see Toasted Mallow opening up a little shop in LA or San Diego. Thank you. It's interesting, um, our backgrounds are not, we didn't start, um, you know, our path in entrepreneurship with dessert at the same time in our lives or anything, but just our backgrounds are very different. But Trisha, even having not been raised in it or have a culinary degree, she, know so much and a lot of that is just by doing so if there's any of you out there that are aspiring to make a certain dessert or um, start your own business you can definitely um, just watch people look on Instagram look on Facebook practice just get your hands dirty and practice uh, do you have an online option online option for ordering um, Trisha does toasted mallow is it thetoastedmallow.com? Yep. And we also take online orders at lisasrumcake.com. Oh, sweet. It's vanilla mocha. Ooh, mine too? Yeah. Ooh, I haven't tried this before. Vanilla mocha? You haven't yeah. tried vanilla mocha? Salud. Salud. Cold brew time. Can orders be made online? Yes. We both take online orders. Absolutely. We both do. Go to Lisa's Rum Cake. Lisasrumcake.com to get cake, cake cake cuts. I can talk. Mm -hmm. Get cake cuts from her. Do you ship these yet? Uh, can we, you ship them yet? We are going to test ship the cannolis oh. because we've had so many people. Well, because everybody makes the deep fried shell so and it gets soggy mm -hmm. from the oil, but ours gets soft from the moisture of the ricotta right. and the custard. But it doesn't get soggy like the oil. Gotcha. So people have been asking us. We're gonna we're gonna try to ship cannolis. She said, order you. Yeah. Lisa's Rum Cake order their cake cuts and cakes. And we have and then, cannolis on there too. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Do you, don't you have a, do you still do any delivery? Um, we do. We're on Uber Eats. Uber Eats. We're on Uber Eats. So if you're within a 10 mile radius of our shop, there you, go. you can get those. Um, we ship when it's cooler out. Yep. You can make marshmallows on money. Oh, that sounds good. I didn't know. Oh, substitute. speaking of making marshmallows, do you have your cookbook handy? I don't. <laughs> I Trisha don't have has a cookbook. New cookbook coming I out. do, I do. Um, Less than a month. Yeah, October 17th. And you can pre order that on the toastedmallow.com. You can. So, Chef, Chef Butters, I love cooking and baking. Okay, me too. I bake for a living, but when I'm at home, I hardly bake. I, I love cooking because I like being able to throw anything together and make something good. The blended pumpkin Ooh, the is the best. Yes, the blended. Oh, you have had that today. It's so good. They had it today. They came in today and had one. Yes, um, Soho. Oh, Dominique Cancel. Cassie Save a Jewelry is a jewelry designer from New York. Oh. My best friend. Uh, wasn't she just featured on the show? Uh, yes, Bull TV. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, another, another young. woman entrepreneur. My best friend, if anyone needs any jewelry. Um, the corn syrup. Why don't I use corn syrup in my marshmallows? I don't use corn syrup in my marshmallows because when I started, we were doing farmer's markets and moms were coming going, is there corn in your marshmallows? 
And I'm like, yeah, I use corn syrup. All happy. Yeah, I use corn syrup. And they're like, oh, my kid's allergic to corn. I'm like, oh. Oh, real? See, I haven't even heard that. So one out of every so often would be like, um, you can't use, I can't eat them because of the corn syrup. I can't eat them because of the corn syrup. So I'm like, oh my God, I, I cannot start a business making marshmallows with corn syrup and then not have a business because kids can't eat it. Right. Well, especially if it's a kid friendly. I mean, yeah. Look at how marshmallows. Kids. So I substitute uh, the corn syrup with uh, simple syrup and so far so good. It works. Yeah, it works great. Corn syrup is a lot cheaper. It is. Uh, we don't we don't use high fructose corn syrup in anything no. that we produce either. And the funny corn thing is, syrup free. Caro syrup says they are not they're non high fructose. Caro. Oh yeah. They are high non they're not high. I fructose. just don't I I don't like corn syrup in general. But, I like real sugar. Um, yeah, so we don't use corn syrup for that purpose because a lot of kids Her have marshmallows allergies. are delicious. Yay! And yes, your jewelry is beautiful. Oh, uh, someone had asked how we got started. So I just said... How we, you know? How we came into the dessert industry. So I said oh. we have very different backgrounds. Very and different. that's actually very our different. first episode on YouTube. Yeah. So go to her YouTube channel because it's not on mine. Um, if you go to the Lisa's Rum Cake YouTube channel, um, you can see our very first episode. And we kind of talked about our backgrounds and how we got started yeah. for more info she was raised in it i was raised in corporate so she's been i was telling you kill it though and a lot of it was just you doing yeah just like the corn syrup doing over you and didn't over. know right no. until you started doing putting your so product in front of people yeah. that mine's all just by error like learning stuff that didn't work or worked better um i was just telling someone yesterday last night they're like you know you can taste the the love in the marshmallow and i said you know I wrote this book I and it, I wrote this book and people are like, oh no, you're giving away your secrets. And I'm like, I'm not giving away my secrets because my secret is me. I, right. I, I make the marshmallow. When you make them, yeah. it's, it's me. You're putting something totally different into it. Right. So however you're going to make them, it's going to be completely different than what I make. Do you think that viewers will get bored of the craze? If you're talking about the craze of Instagram... You know, I was thinking about that a couple days it ago. It will happen. Um, yeah, I mean, like, Facebook, I feel like, isn't as popular anymore. No. I feel like more people are on um, Instagram mm-hmm. now. I think it might phase out at some point, but... Or is Instagram going to phase out, or is Instagram going to modify their platform? I will tell you stories. I don't know about yeah. you, but I feel like we are getting more followers yeah. steadily because of our stories. stories yep. I think the story is a game changer. No, only that, I've been seeing more people put videos up on stories. Like before, I see maybe like one still shots or, or two, yeah. Mm-hmm. But no videos. And lately, like after we did our last one, yeah, like I saw like five people who had live videos. Like, and I'm like, that's awesome. Especially if you are a small business. She's if you better are live a video small than I am. business, you have to do live videos. You have to be on Instagram, Snapchat. I don't know how to use it. And you know what? <laughs> I think it's important too. So if you're starting a business, you have no desire to do social media or you don't want to be on Instagram hire because someone. maybe you don't have the time, hire somebody, but hire someone that has the intention of making it focused on your products right. and selling and not just somebody that can look at your dish and post a picture and say, good job, this dish is delicious and this is what it has. Yeah. Have them be passionate. Like find someone that can write about it in a way that sounds like it's coming from you. Preach this. Preach this. Um, Snapchat is another platform. It is strong. Do you use it? I don't I know don't, how. I don't know how either. I don't know how to use Snapchat. But I don't Snapchat, even know if you would have time. <laughs> Snapchat is definitely another platform that has become more popular. Um, yeah, yeah, this weekend, I since I had time, I went on Snapchat, and there's a, like, a little dancing bitmoji of me. I was like, this is adorable. <laughs> I so I even... might start getting involved with Snapchat, because she's right. Uh, young people use it, and they do. They use it a lot. Okay. Yeah, Snapchat. That would that might have to be something that we. Okay, how about Tumblr? Are you on any of the photo type of? So I am on Tumblr. Okay. And do you use it a lot? I use it every time I post on Instagram. Oh, so you just share it? I just share it. Oh, see, that's, that's actually it. smart because then you don't have to manage yeah. it. That I can share it on Tumblr and Twitter. Okay, this is a this is a really good question. What about bad reviews on social yeah. media? Do you want to start conversation on that or should I? <laughs> okay, here's here's the thing. We both get better at what we do yeah. by feedback, but give us constructive yes. feedback. And honestly, we both don't we don't even get a lot of bad reviews. No. But you won't realize when you start a business, you will not please everybody. No. 
there will it's like when you plan a wedding you're always gonna make somebody mad yes. if you don't put them on the guest list or whatever yes. Yes. actually having a business is almost like planning a wedding yeah you're just some people might not like your product and that's okay it's totally okay it doesn't mean your product isn't good it just it's not for them you need to have a very thick skin mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, reviews on social media like on Google Yelp and um, Google Yelp Facebook oh Facebook yeah I have had some horrible reviews um, and uh, some of them you can go to my Yelp page you'll you'll read them um, and I've answered every single we one of them. We can't hide them. <laughs> can't hide them but I have answered to every single one of them um, and I will I appreciate constructive criticism say like you bought this and you paid $4.99 for it and then you wrote it was too expensive only thing I can say is ask for the prices first or, or, or don't buy it or, or maybe just remember that this isn't from Target it wasn't mass produced right. in the factory and that's one of the biggest things hand done it's hand made are like oh it's too expensive but at the end of the day these are there's no machine we all do it by hand handcrafted everything's baked by hand everything direct, decorated by hand and it's so much love has been put into this it's not something you pick up at Target so remember that when you guys live reviews of it being too expensive like our s'mores bowls are only five ninety five or five ninety nine, I think it is. Which I I think I've told you I'm like I feel like these are too cheap. <laughs> right, and, and it's a serving for two. You could two people can eat one s'mores bowl because it, it's big enough. So those kind of when it says it's too expensive, I don't think those should be written on a review. I I think it, you should say things like. What the, the the store was small, but it's cute. So if you have a big party, call ahead. Perfect. Do something like that, but don't go. Oh, the place was too small. When I got there, there's nowhere to sit. Right. Horrible. You have you to know. kind of take everything into a context. And I will say, Trish and I vary on the social media, like handling the reviews too. <laughs> yeah. She'll respond to reviews on Yelp. I will not respond to reviews on Yelp. Good or bad. Um, if you want to read real reviews about our products, go to lisasroomcake.com. People can only leave a review on our products if they purchase that exact product. Oh. So you, oh, yeah. you can't just go on and write a review for a cake that you tried if you didn't actually order it. Um, and I think that... <laughs> yes, Miss Nearings. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a good one. When someone Every says time. dessert is too sweet. Every time. It's like, it but too it's... Sweet dessert and it does have sugar it's a marshmallow a marshmallow is only made with sugar it's like I don't know how to make it less sweet I don't I don't know how to make the sugar less sweeter <laughs> so right. when people are like it's just too sweet but you stood there and you watched the toppings being placed on it you stood there and saw the menu and what was going to be placed in it so it can't be you can't write a bad review that it was too sweet when you saw what was being placed on it right so here's how I made myself feel better okay Let's hear. I went to Carlo uh, on Cake Boss. Mm -hmm. I went to his Yelp page for his bakery out mm -hmm. in New Jersey. And I think he has like a four star on Yelp. I was like, here's a man who's passionate about his baking. Yep. He's got he's got a TV show. He does all the stuff. I'm like, okay, he has a four star review on Yelp. I can live with this. Mm -hmm. I can live with all the trash talk and the rudeness. And, and you know what? Some people, I people. think, I've... I've been to Yelp pages for big businesses like that that have a TV exposure or whatever. Yep. Sometimes people just write hurtful things yeah. because they're jealous. Yep. And you know what? You have to yeah, have thick skin. Sometimes, yeah. and it's hard because sometimes we get a little worked up about it, but you know, we'll call each other. And, the, and words of Catherine. Did you hear that? Bafangu. Yeah, Wusa. Bafangu. I don't know what Bafangu is, but there we go. I have answered many calls about a greasy burger. I mean, again. It's a burger. Again. I mean, people just apparently don't realize that there's fat in the meat. Uh, how do you order the cookbook? So, two oh, ways. Yeah. You can go to Amazon.com and pre-order pre the book. I did. So I pre-ordered. Or you can go to thetoastedmallow.com and order the cookbook, which will come with a four-pack of marshmallows, a sticker, and I will autograph it for you. So there's two ways. Amazon.com, it's for $17.99. Oh, like, no, $16.99. Uh, I think it's $16.99. $16.99. On our page, I believe it's $25.99. But again, it's going to come with four marshmallows, a sticker, and I'm going to autograph it. And I think it's free shipping, I think. So uh, I can't wait. Can I still get my autograph? Yeah, you can get the autograph. I'm yes. actually going to have a book party. <gasps> Yay! I'm going to have a book party when we have the books come out. Okay. I want the one with the marshmallows. 
Barbecue Queen, you're gonna have to tell me how your order was. I really love hearing feedback when people get orders, so. $16.99 on Amazon, good one. Thank you, Bling Baker. You guys have had some really good questions tonight. I know. Really. I think we're gonna need to do this in Nighttime. the evening. Nighttime. We did it in the morning and it was like, meh, not really a lot of interaction. I've yeah. got a few, but this has been a lot better. We love talking to people. Even though we have work and things to produce, we love, it's nice to just sit and talk to people directly. I'm going to eat them till I'm sick. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> you can eat them. Um, yeah, well, tonight actually was like fun. easy to close up everything, so it wasn't that bad. Tomorrow. So we'll do busy. we'll do um, our next video. We'll talk about something different. Yeah, or social media again, because obviously it's tough. Social media is a yeah. We were like, let's do a twenty minute video, and my timer is about to run out. For <gasps> oh, it is. An hour long. So. <laughs> See, I told you it goes off, and you'll know. Like, hey, you got forty nine minutes left. So thanks for tuning in. We will do another Instagram live soon. Yeah. Holidays are coming up, so they yeah. might not be as often, but no. we. We enjoy this, so. I will jump on occasion when I'm here doing so. The Kindle version's only $9.99 for oh, your cookbook. There you go. Nice to know. Thanks, Blaine Baker. I want your book. Can you send me uh, Amazon? Go to Amazon and order it from then. I'm sure they'll ship sure to Argentina. Ship. All right, guys. I'm about to, to end here. Oh, 17, on mine. You have some extra minutes. 15. Okay. Bye, uh, Lisa's Thank Rumpel. Thank you. I Come got see us. Left. Toasted Mallow. This is rum cake. cake. Have a good one. Bye. I got two minutes left. Any last questions? Uh, will you have the book in the store? Yes. Good night. Mm, I don't know how to say your name, but I know you're in New York. Which what time is it in New York? My best friend. Almost ten o'clock. Almost ten. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate the questions. It's Come more get some fun treats. When you guys give us some questions. Eat a cannoli. Because these are good. We need some pumpkin pie. Oh, yeah. You haven't tried that one yet. Mm -hmm. okay. Caramel apple. Mm -hmm. okay. You like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Look up. You want more of Mmm. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. NYC. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the tip about Bake by Melissa. I didn't know they were as big as a... Pinky. Pinky. But... That was really good. I'm jealous. I know. It was really good. I'm going to tell you. It was really nice, so... All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Love you. I'm going to enjoy this. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah.